Well, we've only got a couple of miles left on our virtual tour of this long abandoned branch line before we get to the end of the line at Rothbury. So, while our train crew are dropping off some parcels for the locals at beautiful downtown Brinkburn and picking up a wagon or two to take on to Rothbury, it is a mixed freight passenger service in case you missed that. But while they do that, we're able to stretch our legs and have a closer look at that bridge just to the south of the station. It is typical of the cattle sheep crossing bridges used throughout Northumberland. Local stone makes up the pillars and old rails and possibly even sleepers are used for the bridge itself. Now that's something which would be pretty easy to scratch build and could be placed in several spots around a layout without looking too much out of place. And over near the good siding, don't forget there's an old World War II pillbox you might like to model as well. But while you're here near the good siding, hey there's a large block of concrete I want to show you. Nice, hey? <laughs> well, hell yeah, because this was the base station for a 1.8 mile long aerial ropeway or tramway which transported coal from the Helicote Colliery way over on the other side of the River Coquet Valley. This would have been quite impressive and what a shame I couldn't find any photos at all. And what a shame they took it down, because I can imagine it would be the best zip line ever nowadays, especially that last bit, being some 40 to 50 metres high up above the river. And well, after arriving safely back at Brinkburn, your train continues its final descent towards Rothbury. And to recover from that zip line trip, you might enjoy another quick cuppa, or maybe something even stronger. For the next few minutes, you are clinging to the side of the valley. You're now travelling some 90 feet above the River Coquet to the east, and to the west, Mount Healy, which is the biggest mountain of our journey, rises 200 more feet above you. We're almost at Rothbury, but there is, however, still a rather large natural barrier in the way. A hill. This was the second major engineering problem that needed to be solved when they were building the line. And, as railway engineers often do, since it wasn't quite high enough to go through it with a tunnel, they just carved out a rather deep cutting, 50 feet high in places, and several hundred yards long. This cutting, the rocks and the vegetation, etc., would be an impressive landform to model, including another very high and now very unsafe looking sheep crossing bridge. Finally, some 40 minutes after leaving Scotts Gap Junction, you're now approaching Rossbury and travel past several long sidings. These were usually packed with passenger carriages on the race days when people came from absolutely everywhere to the popular annual steeplechase events that were the Rothbury races. The sightings, well, they were also jam-packed with livestock wagons on the regular auction days. As you approach the old stone signal box, which I just love, the sidings to the right go towards the goods platforms and stock unloading facilities. The sidings to the left create a runaround for the locomotives from the turntable, along with some extra parking for wagons. The main platform is quite long, and you travel slowly past the goods platform with its old crane, and then past another old wooden coach used for extra station storage. Music 
finally, your train terminates alongside the main station building. It's time to disembark so your train crew can get busy turning the loco on the turntable and refuelling for the return trip to Morpeth. We'll head off on a tour of the town and start with a hearty lunch and some light refreshments at the nearby Station Hotel, now known as the Cogat Vale Hotel Restaurant. After fueling ourselves up, we continue our quick tour and walk along the river, admiring the terraced housing and check out the medieval bridge. And wander down past the hospital where the old Rothbury racetrack was. This location drew huge crowds from afar for the annual steeplechase events. They were held once a year from 1759 through to 1965. And on the other side of the River Coke, there were many old stone buildings in the village which would be great to model, including the War Memorial. That magnificent stone church. And of course, the truly magnificent 15th century bridge which crosses the river. And speaking of river crossings, there was a ford crossing the river down near the auction mart. The stepping stones at this point are quite unique and could add further interest to your model of the area. Just a little further downstream, we come to another model worthy area called the Thrum. This is a shallow gorge where the River Coquet passes through an area of harder rocks. The Thrum apparently being the noise the river makes in this area. So there are also some interesting rocks in the river and the Thrum Mill and Water Wheel on a weir built across those rocks. It all provides even more excellent opportunities for modelling. And just down the river a little, that entire hill is part of the Cragside Estate, which features a monstrous, as in huge, Victorian country house built in the 1870s, which was the first home in the world to be lit by its own hydroelectricity. Yes, it has its own power station. Gregside is now managed by the UK National Trust. So there you go, my virtual bird's eye tour of the Rothbury branch line. We've seen so many potential modelling opportunities along our journey. So many, in fact, that even with a garage sized layout, you probably can't fit them all in, but you'll never be stuck for ideas. And speaking of layouts, well that's exactly what we're going to look at in the final instalment of this series, where we take a closer look at the various track plans I've drawn up to model this area in a garage. And even if you don't have that amount of space, as I don't, then why not look at doing just one of the stations along the line? as Ian Footers used to do way back in the 70s and 80s when I first discovered this area in some very old Railway Model magazines. Make sure you like, subscribe, share and hit that bell so you can see all the great stuff I have for you. I'm Stephen Spry and cheers for now.